in the process of renewing the calendar, you know, when we open the calendar for 2024 and started getting our dates made for the uh, club meetings throughout the years, we came upon, we encountered the date May 4. And upon hearing this, my friend Alan, or our friend Alan, proposed that we capitalize on this date and undertake a, an initiative to enhance our May club meeting. And here we are today. We started wondering who collects Star Wars postcards? Over many years, I have frequently uh, recall seeing articles and picture postcard monthly authored by Mark Routh regarding his Star Wars postcard collection. These postcards could, could potentially be found in a movie theater or a specialized magazine or comic book there in England. Not so much here in our country, but it's wonderful to hear about what's available and then uh, duplicates and so forth make their way over to uh, uh, USA later. Uh, he recounted his experiences meeting these individuals and obtaining autographs from the, some of the feature actors from Star Wars. After establishing contact with Mark, we presented him with the concept of showcasing cards from his collection, and when he enthusiastically in, uh, embraced his receptiveness to the proposal and his availability on the 4th of May today, prompted us to uh, initiate the planning process. The strategy involved maintaining the secrecy of this event for as long as possible, and Mark played a pivotal role in conceiving the program's title, Postcards of a Science Fiction Rebellion. It's my pleasure to welcome our friend Mark Routh from England this afternoon. Let us all come together to witness his enthusiasm and explore his collection. May the fourth be with us all today. Take it away, Mark. Thank you, Hal. Um, what do you do when you get an email from uh, Howard out of the blue? Do you collect Star Wars postcards? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, and then obviously, when I was told that the date was May the 4th, I totally understood why. Um, so, I put together this little presentation of uh, some of the cards from my collection. Uh, and now you understand why um, they wanted to keep it a secret and put it under a different title. I've put it under Collecting Star Wars Postcards. Uh, these two are from a, a colouring in book, which I will give you some more details about in a minute. Uh, a warning, because you have to have these. There will be spoilers. I will be advising you of uh, storylines and uh, tragic deaths and bits and pieces like that. So if you uh, don't want to know any more about these, then uh, you may wish to uh, uh, not hear what I'm going to say. So Star Wars, 1977. The uh, George Lucas Spectacular. Um on the right, on the left side, you have the quad poster that uh, was used in both America and here in the UK. Um, this particular postcard is actually signed up here by Phil Brown, who was who played Uncle Owen in the original film, who I got to see in uh, the 1990s at a convention here in the uh, UK. On the right side, you have a postcard by an artist called Mr. Brainwash. Um, now, he's a graf graffiti artist, and his prints are very, very expensive. The postcards are cheaper, but this particular card often turns up on eBay for anywhere between $25 and $50. So it's an expensive one, but if you're lucky, like me, you might find one in a uh, £1.50 box. So they're worth looking out for, but it's a spectacular piece of artwork taken from the uh, original quad poster. This is a set of four 
poster cards from uh, four different countries, Germany, Japan, China, and uh, Italy. They came free with the DVD release of the original trilogy, although the postcards were an exclusive to the HMV music stores here in the UK. I don't know if they were available in the US, but certainly here, if you went to the HMV one and bought your box set, which you can see down there in the uh, right corner, these four postcards came free for a period of time. Uh, they were limited edition, so uh, you had to try and get your box set early if you wanted to particularly get these cards. I do like the Italian one. It's a little bit more sexualized than uh, than the others. The uh, premiere for Star Wars was held on the 25th of May, 1977, uh, and it was in 32 different US theatres, which included the Chinese theatre in Hollywood. And I came across this postcard uh, by the uh, Mitok publishers, uh, actually from Hollywood. Um, and the picture at the top is actually uh, with the Star Wars banners from its original showing. Here in the UK, we had to wait until the 27th of December before we got to see the film. Although personally for me, I didn't get to see it until 1978. And most of me and my schoolmates in the playground, it was the 1978 film. Early postcards are actually not that common. This one by uh, Drawing Board Greeting Cards is contemporary and is one of the uh, popular ones that collectors are seeking. Uh, greetings, Earthlings, with the uh, the two robots on. Um, the card's not too bad. You can pick it up for somewhere between, if you're lucky, 3 to $8. But uh, sometimes they go far more expensive. Um, on the right side, I was very fortunate in an auction, I managed to pick up a sealed pack of 20 of the postcards. Um, the little sticker on the front tells me that the original price was $1.50. I can assure you I paid much, much more for that when I bought it in auction. But it is nice to have a sealed, a sealed pack. And quite unusual. as the first one I've seen. The Star Wars Fan Club, an exclusive, which ran both in the US and in the UK. This was a, a postcard that was sent out to members. Each of the little sayings from the various films are st stickers that you can remove off and stick to whatever you wish to stick them down to. Um, the post, this postcard's from uh, 1985, so the uh, stickers mention comments from various of the films. Up in the top right, you have the, uh, the official patch for the Star Wars fan club, and I fortunately do have one of those in my collection. This nice uh, card came free with uh, an American magazine called uh, Cracked. Um, the actual magazine front, you can see on the right-hand side, it was issue 148. Um, although the card didn't come with that issue. The card came in a later issue. I've not been able to find out what issue it came with, but it is a very popular postcard. And obviously you can see Chewbacca and Darth Vader, C-3PO and the others on there. The card in the middle... It's quite cheap, 50p to a pound. But it shows a poster, and this poster was only sent out to the cinemas in the US that had continuously shown the film since its release through to its first birthday in 1978. Um, so it was the first birthday cinema poster. Um, an original of that poster was sold in 2019 and it raised and it reached a price of three thousand pounds. So the posters are quite collectible. I'd much rather just have the uh, the postcard. It was easier and cheaper to obtain. All of the characters they're extremely well known. Even if people haven't seen the films, they do know who the characters are. You have Luke Skywalker, played by Mark Hamill. Uh, the card on the left and the card on the right are both from uh, Classico San Francisco. Uh, this company, without a doubt, has produced more Star Wars postcards than any other company. But then they do hold the official license for doing so in both the US and the UK. The card in the middle is a Empire Film Magazine cover card. And I'll tell you a little bit more about these, but you'll see them as they crop up through the various covers. And it's a set I particularly like. Han Solo, played by Harrison Ford. 
Again, you have your two Classico one on either end and your Empire Magazine one in the middle. Uh, in any voting on the most popular characters of the Star Wars films, Han Solo always comes out on top. Carrie Fisher here playing uh, Leia, Princess Leia. Um, the card in the middle, all three are classical San Francisco, but the card in the middle is an earlier release. The card on the right is the same photo, but with additional images along the bottom. And it's from the set that had Star Wars in letters down the side, as you can see from, from either end. Again, you've got two classical San Francisco cards. Uh, Princess Leia is the second most depicted character on postcards. Um, I'm sure you can probably guess who the first one is, but details later. The card top right is from a series from the Boomerang Company Rat Cards in England. And they ran a cinema in card series. And basically each card had a quote from a movie film. Um, most of them are very text based designs. But the Star Wars one, fortunately, had a little picture on it. Uh, and it is also probably one of the better quotes from the film. Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Um, and it's also the most collectible from the 300 odd cards that are in the series. And the one that he always reaches the high, highest prices. Wonderground Gallery is a, a, a Disney company shop. Uh, you find it in the theme parks, uh, Disney Springs in Florida places like that they're large a5 size prints but they have full postcard backs they're very expensive originally when i started buying these they were four dollars 99 each uh, they've now gone up to 5.99 uh, and i'm going back to florida later in the year and i suspect a further increase but the designs are quite spectacular and all unique to this series there you have your empire card in the center, you have an earlier Classico San Francisco. And in the top, you've got the Millennium Falcon on another earlier Classico San Francisco release. Chewbacca, you've got two uh, Classicos. The middle one is also by uh, Classico San Francisco, but it's from a series of character portraits by Joe Smith. Um, these are quite nice. They're all on a plain white background, but they are delightful cards. Um, inside that costume was Peter Mayhew. I had a good fortune of meeting Peter Mayhew, or oh, a decade and a half ago at least, possibly two. Uh, and I took a card with me, and he very kindly signed it for me here. And there's a, a, a enlargement of the of the signature, and, and the bottom right you can see a photograph of uh, uh, Peter Mayhew in his makeup to before he put the mask on. I do like or I did enjoy going to conventions and meeting people and, and getting cards from my collection signed by them. C-3PO, one of the robots. Another uh, character portrait by Joe Smith in the centre and your Empire magazine cover on the right. The card on the left is a, a, a later issue, but it's from GB Posters and was released here in the UK. Inside the costume was Anthony Daniels who I also got to see at a convention there's a photograph I took top right there of him at his stand um he doesn't do many signings but when he does he's they're very popular the queues are always always long uh, a lovely man he has appeared as C3PO he's appeared in more films than any other Star Wars character the other robot is uh, R2-D2, and inside that was Kenny Baker. And again, I had the good fortune of meeting uh, uh, Kenny Baker before he passed away. Um, and he always had a very bold signature. It was always large, and he always put R2-D2 on it as well. And they uh, and they are nice when you come across them. And again, you've got your uh, Empire magazine cover. Obviously, the two robots are known as the droids, uh, and that comes from the saying, these are not the droids you are looking for, which is uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, says to the stormtroopers in the film. Uh, a card in the centre is a colouring in card from the typo stationery postcard pack. The book cover is here that you can see. Uh, and I also have a metal 
plaque which is uh, on my wall downstairs in my office and it has the same image as on the card and around the edge and down the bottom there you've got some other uh, of the cards for colouring in from this very nice postcard colouring in book there's a couple more that come up later Obi-Wan Kenobi in the original film and in the uh, the original three films it was played by Sir Alec Guinness and the, uh, the Classico card on the left is a uh, promotional uh, photograph. The two cards on the right side are trade cards from the uh, the set that were, was sold in the UK uh, at the height of the popularity. I can remember swapping these with uh, my friends in the playground. And uh, these two are actually from my full set, which I still have. And without a doubt, for me, my favourite character, uh, Darth Vader. These are all classical San Francisco and if you were wondering from my question earlier it is Darth Vader that, that appears on more postcards than any other character. Inside the costume was Dave Prowse um, who again I did actually get to see Dave Prowse a few times. Uh, there's a nice postcard on the left side from the Film Freak Productions from the Netherlands um, and he used to sign Dave Prowse is Darth Vader. And that's the uh, the signature on that card. The middle card, I was at a convention and he was there. I already had his signature, but he was there. And I came across this James Earl Jones signed card. Uh, James Earl Jones supplied the voice for uh, Darth Vader through all of the original films. So I bought the sign card and took it to uh, Dave Prowse's store, and I had him sign it as well. Uh, double signed cards are actually not very common, but it is a nice addition to my collection, or one of my favourite cards, which I would probably have picked as card of the month if uh, there wasn't an element of uh, surprise built into the title for the uh, presentation. And he had three more. Your Empire magazine cover in the centre is a delightful card from Australia, from uh, Avant Card Australia, which is a free rack card company there. That's from 2005, and it's an M&M chocolate sweet advertisement uh, from the Chocolate Empire series. And there's a few cards from this series, and they are lovely. The card on the right is from Germany. And the little elephant character in there is quite popular there and appears on a number of different cards. Um, and there you have that uh, great line from the, uh, the second film, I am your father. The big surprise that uh, we all got hit when the second film came out. Yoda, another character that was uh, introduced in the second film. Again, you have your Joe Smith character portrait in the middle. Uh, possibly my favourite one. Um, and another Classico and your uh, Empire magazine cover. The card on the left is from Paris, from France, from a company called Editions Images. Now, surprisingly, postcards of basic scenes from the films, especially contemporary, are actually quite unusual. Um, and I came across this one and it's still the only one I've seen of this card and I do like this one a lot it's an unusual one as we're doing Yoda I'll introduce you to the US Postal Service uh, stationary postcard set uh, this is obviously the Yoda stamp and they're all, uh, all of the cards each individually depicted a stamp from a stamp sheet from issued in 2007 the stamp sheet is there on the right hand side and you can see all of the individual stamps as they appear and obviously these all appear separately on their own card in the postal stationery packed book here and there's my mint sealed pack one but there's also a jumbo postcard pack which people don't know so much about there's 20 cards in this one because it does include the full sheet and a couple of other sections of the uh, sheet as well that do not appear on individual stamps this is a nice set especially the jumbo card this one here if you can get hold of one of these 
but the sheet's lovely and i do this is the sheet from my own collection the empire strikes back the second film came along in 1980 again as with star wars contemporary cards were still not that common uh, and again, as with the uh, Greetings Earthlings card you saw earlier, this is from Drawing Board Greeting Card Incorporated. Um, full set of six, also in scenes and a couple of promotional images. Certainly the one bottom right is a promotional image. It's a lovely set. The cards aren't too expensive if you find them priced properly. Be very wary of the people who price them at £19 plus because there are a number of these they're not short in supply the one top left of course is the scene where Darth Vader informs Luke Skywalker that I am your father so it's nice to get that particular scene on a postcard um, I do like the one on the left it's a poster design it's from uh, New Line and it's published in here in the UK it's the only postcard I've seen with uh, this Darth Vader helmet space poster design. And it's particularly nice. The one in the middle is from Huma à la carte from Paris. Although it's a French produced card, obviously the uh, writing on the front is in English. The card on the right was actually produced as a poster and was sold as a poster. The postcards came along later. But uh, it's a poster design, not for the cinemas. It's a poster design to go on children's walls. But uh, it is a nice image. Here on the left, you have a French card, actually, with the title in French. But this is from uh, Editions F. Nugron, who did a huge series of film poster cards throughout the 80s and the 90s through into the 2000s. Um, and this is a particular nice one. One of my favourites, actually. The card in the middle has Darth Vader on it. It's actually from uh, the Boomerang Belgium uh, publishing free cards. And it was for an event in Ostend from 2007. So this is a later card, but it's a particularly nice one. And the last card on the right is the uh, an advertising card for the Odeon Cinema in uh, here in the UK. And as you can see, it has the Death Star on the top the film also introduced lando clarizian and uh, emperor palpatine um these two are joe smith portrait cards um palpatine was played by diamond in the films after this but in this particular film he was played by uh and i can't quite see the text because there's lots of people's photographs but uh, uh it was an actress and she was 78 years old when uh, she portrayed the, uh, the character, because in this film, the character only appeared as a hologram. So there's a little bit of information down the side there, which uh, tells you all about uh, uh, Marjorie. As I say, she uh 78 years old at the time that she actually played that. In the centre, there's a card which has a piece of film cell encapsulated in it from the film, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, and there was a card for each of the three films and uh, these were given away free with uh, magazine FX, SFX and you got one card per magazine I got the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett the Bounty Hunter was played by Jeremy Bullock and again I had the opportunity to meet Jeremy Bullock and he signed this Film Freaks card for me then you have the, uh, the Classico card on the left Three different cards, your Empire magazine cover. The centre card is an advertising card for uh, Ben and Jacobs Art and More. Uh, and it's an online company and shop that sells uh, artwork, prints and posters. And that was a free card given away at uh, UK conventions. And on the uh, left side, you have Auction Universe advertising postcard, which at the time was the UK's largest auction network uh, and here you have one that shows a Boba Fett toy. And that was another free card. Return of the Jedi came along in 1983. Uh, and the Odin Cinemas did a pre-publicity card, which was this one here, the large one uh, showing Luke Skywalker. And uh, this basically said, uh, see it soon at your local Odeon or other ranked leisure cinema. The saga continues. 
uh, and that's now quite a sought after card. On the right, you have two colouring in cards from the book that we previously mentioned, but uh, you've got the iconic gold slave costume that uh, Leo wore in this one, and you've also got the speeder bike that was introduced in uh, Return of the Jedi, uh, which was used on the uh, planet of Endor. The postcard on the left is uh, an unusual film poster, and uh, I don't see this one very often. It's an unnamed publisher, but it was available here in the UK and across Europe. The one in the middle uh, is another unnamed publisher. This one's signed by Tim Rose, and Tim Rose was the actor inside the Admiral Akbar costume. Admiral Akbar is shown here on the Empire magazine cover, so you can see uh, what the character was. Um, this is an, uh, the middle one is an unnamed publisher card, but it's quite dark in its colouring, which will become relevant when I show you the one on the left, which is the Classico San Francisco version of the same poster, which is much lighter in colour. It does make you see the uh, Darth Vader in the background a little bit better. This one is signed by Mike Edmonds, who played the uh, Ewok Logri. Uh, and the centre card is signed by Michael Carter, who played Bib Fortuna, and uh, uh, Femi Taylor, who played the uh, dancing slave girl Ula. Um, and here you have photographs of them that I took at the signing sessions that uh, they kindly signed these cards for me for actually not too much money. Warwick Davis, very young when he played the uh, Ewok Wicket. Uh, as you can see in this photograph here, he was actually only a child at the time and he was looked after by Carrie Fisher through most of the filming. Uh, Classico San Francisco uh, artwork card of the Ewoks and this is Classico card of uh, Wicket and here is Warwick Davis's uh, signature because I've enlarged up here again from... Uh, uh, seen him. I actually stayed in the same hotel as him and his family uh, the night before this convention and uh, I was in the uh, dining hall having dinner. Let's carry on. Right, okay. Uh, new insertions and uh, special effects added to the screens and uh, the company Filmwerk Berlin from Germany uh, issued these cards a set of 26 which mostly showed scenes which had additional uh, CGI aspects, i.e. the uh, uh, Sarlacc pit here. This was all new and didn't appear in the original film. Uh, this all didn't appear in the original film. Uh, and this top left is actually a scene that was filmed for the first film but wasn't included. So they added some CGI and added that as a special new scene for the film. So this set is unusual you get to see images that you don't see on other postcards. Computer games here in the UK, they normally came along with uh, a free postcard in the boomerang racks in the cinemas, restaurants, bars and other locations. Uh, and these are all individual postcards for different computer games that came out across the uh, mid to late 90s. I particularly like the Rebel Assault 2 one in the middle. Although the Dark Forces one on the uh, uh, the far left is the one that I first came across. And if you notice, just down the bottom here, this one is also signed by Femi Taylor, who played the uh, slave girl in uh, the third film. Again, Millennium Falcon, probably the most iconic of uh, uh, spaceships for uh, sci-fi films. Um, the one on the left is for a computer game. The one on the right is for the film Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens when it came out some years later. We will talk about this in a minute. But I particularly like this because Sky Store, you could pre-order seeing the film and they issued this free postcard of this superb Millennium Falcon. 1998 brought us the first of the prequels, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Uh, again, the uh, Odeon Cinemas and other cinemas had uh, a free postcard promoting the film coming along on July the 1st here in the UK. Uh, top right, you have another of the uh, Avant Card Australia M&M Suite cards. And I show you this one because, although without a doubt, Darth Vader is my favourite 
Star Wars character coming up very close behind is Darth Maul, who was introduced in this film. And uh, in 2019, he appeared on a Royal Mail stamp. And uh, this is the PHQ stamp card that uh, depicts that particular image. The interesting thing about this was the stamp wasn't released until 2019, but there was a set of stamps issued in 2015, which didn't have that. But in 2015, all subscribers to Royal Mail literature and uh, pamphlets received a gift. And it was a slightly larger than A5 size print with a certificate. And the image was the Darth Maul stamp that was not to come out for another four years and which we didn't actually even know was going to be released. So that was a nice freebie. Darth Maul's played by Ray Park, who I did meet. And I have a signed limited edition print in my collection, which is behind me at the moment. Um, and that's a nice addition to my Star Wars collection. Um, free Darth Maul postcards and a good indicator to people to never assume you have a card when you're going through stock. Especially the centre one and the one on the right, they look very similar. The one on the left is from London Car Guide. The one in the middle is from Boomerang Free Cards Amsterdam. And the one on the right is from Edgar Meaden in Germany. So uh, the cards were issued across Europe. And it's nice to get all three. In the same series for London Car Guide and for the Boomerang Free Cards, this poster postcard also came out. I've not found one from the German company but I sus suspect there may be one. But note the different logo on the uh, right-hand side in the centre on each card. The two outside cards are again from Boomerang, and they were from a set that were in the uh, in the free rack cards in my Odeon cinema. I particularly like the Darth Maul one. The card in the centre is an artwork card. Uh, I know it's by an unnamed publisher. This was another design that was actually created for wall posters but then later produced as a postcard. The second uh, prequel was uh, Attack of the Clones, 2002. Uh, and this is a, a few cards and the pack for uh, a set issued by GB Posters. And this is the uh, the pack as it came. And this is one of the postcards, obviously, shown through the cellophane. And this was pack one. There was a pack two. I particularly like this card, which is by... I've shown it again here with the uh, uh, with the actual sealed pack because you have Darth Maul and it's one of the cards that uh, shows uh, that famous actor Christopher Lee who played Count Dooku in uh, Attack of the Clones and also in the subsequent third prequel. The card on the right is unusual because technically it's a family photograph. You have mum and dad at the top and the kids at the bottom. And if all those who don't know their spoilers, Anakin Skywalker and Padme were mum and dad to uh, Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia, who in the initial film we didn't know were brother and sister, but then to be fair, nor did the producer and the writer, because that came along later as an option and uh, wasn't really announced until the third film. This set comes from Singapore, from a company called Art Cards. There are nine cards in the set, and I am missing one. And the one I am missing is almost certainly Anakin Skywalker. But it's a nice set, and all of these were individual character posters that were uh, used as pre-promotion for the film. The last of the prequels was Revenge of the Sith. That came along in 2005, introduced Anakin Skywalker as... Uh, the lead into his uh, change into uh, Darth Vader. And the centre card shows the teaser poster that came out, which shows Anakin Skywalker and his cape turning into the mask of Darth Vader. Star Wars became uh, the property of Disney in 2012, having bought it for uh, an astronomical amount of money in the billions from uh, George Lucas. Uh, the first film they produced was The Force Awakens. And here you have uh, a poster card free from uh, Boomerang. 
The centre one is a card by uh, Rich Davis. Rich Davis is an artist that does uh, designs for posters, DVD covers, uh, books. Um, and he also produces these as postcards, which he sells exclusively from his stand when he goes to conventions. Uh, I had the fortune to meet him at the NEC uh, here at Birmingham, and uh, I acquired this card. The card on the right is a Wonderground card from uh, Disney again, and this is BB-8, the robot, and uh, the three main characters, Poe, Ray, and Finn. The two cards here were free at uh, my Odeon Cinema, and uh, again, uh, promoted the release of the film. And uh, something different, there's a couple of stickers there that were given away free in the uh, Subway restaurants here in the UK. I know you have Subway in the US, but I don't know if the stickers were also there. But certainly uh, there was a set of four given away here in the UK, uh, and there are the other two. The two cards are, uh, again, Disney Wonderground gallery cards um, related to uh, this first Disney Star Wars film. Uh, the Last Jedi came out in 2017. It was the second of the Disney releases. Uh, the card in the centre is another Rich Davis exclusive design. Um, and you've got one on the left which shows the three droids. BB-8, the little round one here, was uh, exclusive to the Disney films. Hadn't appeared in, in the earlier three films. Um, I don't have any postcards for The Rise of Skywalker, which was the uh, uh, the third of the Disney films, but uh, I give you a run-in order here of the correct timeline to watch the films in to see them in chronicle, chronicle order. There were a couple of standalone films. Rogue One, uh, which kind of fits in between uh, Revenge of the Sith and uh, Star Wars, A New Hope, although I for me it'll always just be Star Wars uh, the addition of A New Hope was added in 1981 uh, so when I was at school when I went to see the film it was just Star Wars and that's what it is to me uh, but Rogue One tells the story of how the uh, blueprints for the Death Star were eventually uh, obtained and passed to Princess Leia which is the start of the Star Wars film and um, I think, personally, Rogue One is the best of the uh, Disney film releases. Uh, the finale of the film uh, is on the planet Scarif, and uh, this is a poster design on the right side from a pack of Disney cards, which I shall talk about in a moment. Uh, the other standalone film is uh, Solo, a Star Wars tale, which basically told the story of, uh, of Han Solo, before the uh, Star Wars films. Um, no postcards yet, but if you went to the cinema here in, in England, certainly the Odeon Cinema, you received a free Sabak card. Now, Sabak is a card game that's played in the film. Um, there were four to collect, and you either had to go to see the film four times or find a very, very, very nice person behind the counter who would kindly give you a full set of four. And that's my set of four. A few autographs from my collection. This is Peter Diamond. He's the uh, gentleman who's inside that Tuscan Raider costume. But he was also the stunt coordinator for the Star Wars film. Uh, the Empire postcard in the middle obviously has exactly the same photograph as that used on the Classico card. The signature is here. And this is uh, Peter in his costume, but without wearing the mask. Bill Hookins, he played the uh, X-Wing pilot uh, Red Six. Uh, he came to a signing session here in the UK and very kindly signed this uh, Classico card for me. Uh, and there's a photograph there that I took of him at the uh, signing session. Garrick Hagen. Now, this is where these Dark Forces cards come in very handy for me. They're an ideal card for signatures. Uh, Garrick Hagen has signed it here for me. And there's a picture up, up here from the signing session. But later, he had his own postcard produced, which was unique to him, which he sold at conventions. And the middle card is that exclusive postcard. Dark Forces card. 
as I say, excellent for obtaining autographs. And here you have five from my collection, uh, signed by a number of different people who played parts in the original trilogy. Uh, you have uh, uh, Michael Carter again as Big Fortuna, John Hollis as the Lobot from The Empire Strikes Back, uh, Michael Sheed, who's well known here in the UK before he passed away, uh, who played uh, Admiral Uzel. Um, Michael uh, Culver, who sadly passed away only this year. He uh, played Captain Nida. And on the far side there, you have uh, Moti, played by uh, Richard La Um Three of those all suffered at the hands of the uh, Darth Vader, either being choked or uh, having some form of uh, mental force punishment placed upon them. Um, Phantom Menace, episode uh, one from the uh, the prequels, you've got Hugh Krishari, who played uh, Captain Panaka. Again, you've got a photograph that I took from the uh, signing session, and he's actually signed out to Mark from Panaka, Hugh Krishari. And that was quite a nice one to get for my collection. The uh, toys. This is a superb advert postcard from Kenner for the X-Wing uh, craft. Um, superb toy. Superb postcard becoming harder and harder to obtain, so worth keeping an eye out for. These ones crop up far more often than the free Lego advertising postcards for the Lego toys. These are numerous and quite cheap and easy to pick up, but they are superb. Cartoon series from 2003 on the television, uh, Clone Wars, uh, with the artwork by renowned artist uh, Gendy Tartakovsky. I always have a trouble with his name. Um, superb cartoon series, but sadly, it was removed from the Star Wars canon in 2014, so the cartoons aren't part of the actual timeline anymore. And that was mostly because in 2008, another series came along called The Clone Wars, uh, and that rewrote the story thus erasing the previous one. But here are three uh, postcards from Germany for the 2008 animated series. Disney have had a long relationship with Star Wars. Obviously, they now own it. But uh, in 1987, they opened a ride in Disneyland called Star Tours. And that also opened in 89 in uh, Disney World in Florida. Um, this is the card that I actually bought from uh, the Disney MGM Studios. And as you can see, at the top of the back, it says Disney MGM there. Disney M Studios changed its name to Hollywood Studios in uh, 2008. So you can date the card to before that from the, uh, the use of the MGM logo at the top. Uh, down here, you'll see a little robot. This is R3X. R3X was the pilot of the craft on the Star Tours ride. Or at least he was for a while, but he will crop up again in a minute. All rides have to exit through a gift shop. It's compulsory. Star Tours ride is no, no different. And there are postcards there sometimes. I haven't always found postcards, but on my visits, occasionally I have. The two poster ones uh, on the left side are, in my personal opinion, superb and amongst the best of the Star Tours postcards available. The one on the right is uh, Tatooine. Although it doesn't say it, that's Jabba's Palace. That actual poster, as you exited the ride and went down the corridor towards the gift shop, that poster was on the wall. And in the gift shop, they used to sell the postcard. So it was uh, a nice one to obtain. And then 2019, Galaxy's Edge opened up. Initially in Disneyland, and then later in the same year in Disney World. And it's a Star Wars themed land. And the idea is, is that it's on the planet of Batu, And the area you are visiting is Black Spire Outpost. Um, you can also buy uh, each of the two parks an exclusive postcard pack, which includes artwork poster style cards like these three. And these three. And over here you have... R3X again, although now he's DJ R3X because he now plays music in a cantina called Ogre's Cantina where you can buy your drinks and he is up on the uh, the stage and plays music for you. 
He was replaced on the starters ride in 2011 by C3PO, who is still there. Here's eight more cards from the 24 cards that are in the pack. And here you have the postcard pack cover. As I say, it's an exclusive to the uh, the park. And this one here, Black Spire Outpost with the Millennium Falcon, is as the Millennium Falcon appears in the park. And uh, you get the opportunity to uh, pilot that. Uh, and as a child of the 1978 playground, piloting the Millennium Falcon was one of my favourite Disney Park experiences ever. Um, Disney do limited pin postcard collections. Uh, this is the Star Wars one that uh, was available on my last visit. You obviously have the postcard and it's sealed in its pack and the pin, which is over on the top right corner, uh, is a detachable pin that you can wear and uh, you have the little mouse bit at the back that holds it onto your clothing or in this case on the postcard. As you can see, they're not cheap because you can see the price there, bottom right, frightening, but you do get a pin, you do get a postcard, and if you're mad like me, you simply can't leave that on the shelf. Um, Disney Cruise Line do Star Wars at Sea Days, and as we are speaking now, there is one going on for, may the 4th be with you, International Star Wars Day. The whole reason for why you are uh, watching this particular Zoom meeting. And they sell exclusive postcards on board the ship. And uh, as you can see, the postcard in the middle is one of the exclusive Star Wars ones. Um, as an aside, because they're not Star Wars, if you ever take a trip on a Disney cruise line, in your cabin, on the desk, open the drawer that's in the middle. Inside, you'll find two exclusive postcards that are free for uh, passengers to use they're not star wars but it's a good thing to know and on the left side you can see the two postcards that i picked up on my first disney cruise we've talked about the Wonderground gallery i'm going to show you a few more they are expensive but the artwork is lovely they are all the artwork is exclusive to these cards so if you want these this is the only way of getting them and although they're now five ninety nine each on the second hand market on eBay and other auction sites, they are worth and sell for much much more. So they are worth buying at source. There's another three here. <clears throat> I particularly like the fuzzball Chewbacca on the left. Um, the one in the middle is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. She's an artist who's well known for taking Disney characters and turning them into almost childlike characters with large heads and large eyes, which are her feature addition to her artwork. Um, and this is obviously now Disney owned Star Wars. But she was able to do Princess Leia. Here, right. Miscellaneous bear with me. Oh, I missed one. There we go. Go back one. Um, I've shown you this one because it's one of my favourites for the Wonderground Gallery because it can be shown either way up. It's two images of the same card, and you can, if you are light side uh, prone, you can have Luke Skywalker at the top, or if like me, you are a bit of a fan of Darth Vader, you can turn the card upside down and have, in my opinion, the far better dark side at the top. There was a craze for Magic Eye in the late 80s and in the early 90s, particularly in the early 90s. Classico did a series of Star Wars ones. Now, I hate these. I hate them for a particular reason. And that is because I cannot see what's on them. To me, that is just a blur of colour. But they exist. I've included this one here for you. If anyone knows what that is behind these two stormtroopers, uh, please do let me know at some point. Because for me, that is literally a blur. Uh, that's the best one with the stormtroopers, obviously iconic uh, uh, soldiers from the uh, original trilogy. There's a Classico card there, and I'll show you the US Postal Stationery one there. Um, as I say, there's a set of these Magic Eye ones. Um, by all means, watch this at a later date and try and work out what's on them, because I still don't know. 
Um, events. These are all UK. You've got the uh, Star Wars experience at uh, Wembley Exhibition Hall from 2019. The one in the middle was an iconic poster for the Art of Star Wars exhibition. And this one's from the National Museum of Photography, Film and Television here in the UK. That one's from 2000 or like ran from 2000 over into 2001. And on the far right side, you've got the 10th Festival of Fantastic Films, 1999. I don't know if you can see, but uh, try and find the Millennium Falcon. Uh, at the moment, it's hiding behind all the people, but uh, in the bottom right corner of the main picture block, there's a little Millennium Falcon flying along. This is a parody set entitled The Force, uh, a crossover between The Simpsons and Star Wars. It's a set of nine cards that comes in a nice pack. The pack is shown on the left side and the image on it is also one of the postcards within the pack. Uh, all the artwork is done by uh, Fletch uh, and these were actually published by the uh, London Postcard Company or rather printed by the London Postcard Company for Fletch uh, and they were very, very popular. Done in large numbers and there are several sets on eBay worth hunting down. It, it is a very amusing set of postcards. Some advertising cards. You've got your Nokia phone from Germany. Uh, the middle card is a computer game for uh, Jedi Starfighter, another German card. Um, my favourite is the one on the right side because I picked this up myself from a Walmart in, uh, in Florida in 2019 on one of my holidays. And it was an exclusive card that they were giving away to try and get me to buy that particular computer game but as a postcard and as a free one it was superb uh dave white is an artist here in the uk um he attends uh conventions and uh does sci-fi artwork and he did a star wars based collection and uh gave away this free advertising postcard of the stormtrooper on the left side um with all these details on the back so that was a free card and was superb the one on the right is Insight Editions, uh, a company in the US that sell uh, special edition books. I particularly like this one because the strip at the bottom in black, this is a perforated edge. And this is actually a bookmark that you can take off and use in your reading book. So it's a, a little bit of a novelty card. And obviously you have Obi-Wan Kenobi as your Star Wars connection. These aren't postcards, they're uh, postcard-sized cards. It's a set of four, issued at the time of The Phantom Menace, uh, each one individually showing a character from the film. Um, I had to show you these because if you turn them over, the back of the four cards is a composite image of Darth Maul, and who could possibly resist another Darth Maul addition to my collection? Uh, two more cards from the uh, colouring in book that we saw earlier. Um, I wasn't going to include these, but Chewbacca is so good. And uh, that card is such a delightful one. I had to do it. And I thought the one in the middle, which actually shows a piece of artwork, which is Japanese in its style. And I did like that. And I wanted to show you the really unusual one on the right. It's actually from my hometown of South End here in Essex. It's an advert card for a nightclub event. Although to me, the image seems to show that Darth Vader's already attended the event, is suffering a little bit of a hangover as an after uh, effect of the evening. But it's a delightful card. Uh, and actually quite hard to find because it was only available down here in uh, my little corner of the UK. You've seen a number of these Empire covers. Just want to quickly discuss them. Uh, I had to show you the uh, Darth Maul one because... That's superb. Um, these were from uh, 1997, and the Empire magazine decided that they would do 30 different covers that were available to buy. So you could buy whatever cover you of a character you liked. So there was 30 covers for 30 years. But it was actually 32 covers, because the one in the middle was the subscriber's exclusive cover. And that's the one I received, because I'm actually a subscriber but they also did a postcard of the su subscribers cover the cover on the right is called the gold cover 
only 10 covers were produced. And if you were fortunate enough to find that one, because let's face it, would you want a Jar Jar Binks cover in any other way? Uh, if you were fortunate to find that one, then you would receive a money can't buy goodie bag direct from the Skywalker Ranch in the US. So it was a highly sought after magazine. And this is obviously the postcard that reproduces that. So you had 30 postcards showing the 30 that were available in the shops. You had two cards for the special ones. And here's another 10 just to show you that the characters were really varied. And a few more. And on the right side there, you have the box that these came in. Now, the box says box set of 40 postcards. And that was because the other eight cards were all Star Wars Celebration Europe advert posters for an event held in Europe that year. And in the bottom uh, right there, you can see R2-D2 flying over the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. And there you have the uh, ships over the top of the Brandenburg Tour in Berlin. The Colosseum in Rome, and my favourite one, top centre, the uh, Tonton, being ridden by uh, 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 a rebel in his Hoff uniform with uh, Tower Bridge on the uh, side of the Thames, which I think is uh, a superb poster. Royal Mail issued a set of uh, stamps in 2015. They also issued a set in 2017 and another in 2019. But uh, the other ones we didn't know about until later. But the first set came out. You could get them in two ways. You could buy a mint or you could try and arrange to have them used first day with special cancels, which is how I like them. And there's the example of two of the mint cards and two of the used on the front. This is my full set of 2015 cards. Each one used with a special cancellation with the equivalent stamp applied to the front. There are 12 character cards and there was also a miniature sheet which showed different types of vehicles. The full miniature sheet is quite large. So although there was a card for each of the individual stamps from the sheet, if you wanted the whole sheet cancelled first day, you needed two copies of the card that had the mint sheet on so that's the reason why there's two there because the full sheet is just too big to put on one card but i'll show you a mint one of that in a sec as I said there were other issues which were also issued as cards down the bottom are the stamps from the 2019 set and you can see the darth maul one here that i showed you the stamp card for earlier we're going to get technical now it's the only bit of technical i will get on this one for uh, those who like uh more than just the image the 2015 set both the transport ones and the character cards so all of those and all of those were available in two different formats if you bought them from royal mail you obviously had to pay for them and so there was a barcode on the back and only a small bit of text there about the uh, the fact that star wars material was available but you could also get them without the barcode and with this lovely box of uh, extra text added here. And these were on cards that came free attached to copies of a magazine here in the UK called Stamp and Coin Mart. The full set was issued over three issues, December 2015 and January and February 2016. And what you see there is the December issue, which I've got unopened still sealed with the pack of cards in there so there are two different ones the stamp and coin mark ones are far more collectible and they are harder to find although quite a few were made but they were printed with special backs so they are very different and are very collectible only eight stamps were issued for the 2017 issue and no special sheet and again all eight of the stamps i've shown you them there and i've shown you the c3po one as a card but you can imagine what those eight looked like as cards because the format was the same the 2019 set of characters also came with a miniature sheet this is the 2015 one that you've seen and this is the mint card with the sheet on it this is the 2019 special sheet which also had a mint card showing the whole sheet and individual cards 
showing the individual stamps. I haven't shown you all of them, but you can see uh, four of them there. Design Rare US. This is a uh, company that do party packs. And they do packs of eight cards, eight folded cards, which are invites, and then eight thank you cards, which you would send out to the people who attended your party. And they did a Star Wars pack. You can see the sealed pack, bottom right. Um, this is the pack that I bought on my trip in 2015. And as the stamps had come out, I couldn't resist doing some of the postcards. Um, I like the fact that the image of Ray on the stamp is the same as the image of Ray on the postcard. So that really made a nice combination. Um, and also there was a Kylo Ren stamp. So that made a nice one to add to the front of the greetings card. I wasn't sure if they would cancel those, but they did for me. Um, and you can see the cancellations either side. Um, so there's something a little bit different all from my collection. So I knew the stamps were coming out and I was in America in Octo early October and the stamps came out. I was in September and the stamps came out in October. I found a set of Wonderground cards, which I particularly liked, and they had a large white border. And I just thought that they were ideal to have stamped up as unique additions to my own collection. So this is the Millennium Falcon uh, Han Solo Chewbacca card. Han Solo stamp wasn't obvious. The Millennium, stamp, Millennium Falcon stamp from the uh, stamp sheet was another obvious. Obviously, Chewbacca didn't come out for another four years, and I didn't even know that was coming, so I couldn't do anything about that. But I added Obi-Wan Kenobi and Boba Fett because Boba Fett was responsible for putting Han Solo in the uh, Carbonite. So uh, it made a nice little combination. So that's unique. That I did myself, and that's the only one. And I can assure you, at £4.99 a card, I bought one mint one and another mint one to do this. I wasn't going to buy any more. Uh, but notice here that the hand stamp is blue. UK hand stamps are very rare in blue. So this was a nice, unusual colour. Then there was this card. Uh, Leia and the robots. The robot stamps didn't come out until two years later, but uh, there was a Princess Leia stamp. I also thought Ray was a nice stamp to add to it as another female uh, icon of the Star Wars movie um here you have a black cancellation and it's an at, -at from the uh, the film empire strikes back and that's a lovely again probably unique so i doubt anyone else is as stupid as me uh in organizing something like this and then lastly my favorite of this particular set and again luke skywalker and darth vader were a must to apply to this one and it seemed logical to put the Stormtrooper and uh, Palpatine on the bottom. And here you have the, ca the cancellation in red. So um, a blue cancellation on one, a black cancellation on the middle card, and a red cancellation on that one. So I got an email from Howard that said, do I collect Star Wars cards? And uh, if I did, would I be able to do a Zoom presentation? Um, so... Uh, he needed to know whether or not I was any good at this. And I decided that he pick me, you will. So hopefully you would have seen that uh, my Star Wars collection was adequate enough to produce a uh, Zoom presentation. Although I'm not purely a Star Wars postcard collector, as you can see from the various uh, photographs around the edge there. And with that, we would nicely bring this to the end with two more of the colouring in postcards, although I'm sure like me, you can imagine that there's not a lot of colouring in involved on those two. So now if you bear with me I shall there we go, I'm out of that and if you have any questions I am not in a galaxy far, far away, I'm actually only over here in the UK. Very good. Bill, we need to, you to unmute yourself, please. Bill Burton. And he'll go over any questions or comments. I just cannot believe all of the work and effort that you put 
We just thank you so much, Mark. It was terrific. But Bill, you go ahead, please. Mark, for a man who says he doesn't collect these cards. <laughs> um, it's a sideline. It's a, yeah, it's right. A side of course, it's a sideline. Um, you have a special room dedicated to these cards? Uh, oh, oh no! I have, I have, I have two postcard rooms, but they're full of all sorts. So, uh, yeah, these are just uh, a cards in a few boxes amongst the many other stuff that I, my wife says I unfortunately have. Has a comprehensive uh, checklist of the Star Wars cards ever been produced? Uh, no, no, and I. Al was, wanted to know because I think he wants to start a collection, but I'm not sure. <laughs> It would be it, it would be very hard. The problem is, and this is a thing with a number of different film lines and television programs as well, is that copyright is very expensive. So what you get and what you saw is a lot of unnamed publishers because they're trying to uh, avoid the copyright expenses. Obviously, yeah. uh -huh. pay for a license for Star Wars is a lot of money. Classico San Francisco pay a fortune for their uh, their license for their Star Wars postcards, but then again, they produce uh, uh, thousands and thousands of them. But the other ones, uh, companies can't afford the licenses, so you do find a lot of cards where it's an unknown publisher, and also you get the same image from different publishers, all unnamed, so it gets quite difficult. Are there dealers in the UK? This is Hal again. Are there dealers in the UK who buy and sell uh, uh, these cards? Um, there's not too many modern postcard dealers in the UK at the moment. There's one or two, uh, and most of them do do a film section. But the thing is, the really difficult cards to get, you really have to go online to try and find. You showed some cards that, that indicated that they're they're coloring cards. Yes, right, yes. In a in a booklet that sold uh, there's a stationers here in the UK called Typo. I don't know if they're also in America, perhaps someone could let me know, but uh, and they do exclusive stationary material. Uh, and this was a postcard book that they sold in their shops. Uh, and, and all of the cards in it are for colouring in, although some like the last two don't necessarily involve a lot of colouring in them. Uh, George Eberhardt has asked, are there any Mandalorian cards? Yes, there are. Uh, there was a calendar sold here in the UK, which had 12 detachable postcards of the uh, Mandalorian. So, yes, there are Mandalorian postcards. But uh, I obviously, I wanted us all to go home at some point. <laughs> so I haven't added everything from my collection. But yes, there are Mandalorian postcards. George asks again, uh, have you done any postcard exhibitions of these cards? No, I've uh, I've never done anything with my Star Wars. And uh, the only reason you've suffered this one is because how obviously somehow picked me out of the ether to, uh, as a possible collector. <laughs> <laughs> Where are <Okay>. we lucky? <laughs> uh, Jerry Delaney, uh, uh, I'm butchering your last name, Jerry. I apologize. Uh, asked, uh, uh, says, thank you so much for doing this. It's it's pretty amazing, which I think we can all agree with. Um, well, it's my, my first ever Zoom meeting and my first ever Zoom presentation as a meeting. So, well, there we go. Well, Wichita Postcard Club is going to make you famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yes. Uh, Alan asks, uh, did you produce a, uh, did, did anybody produce a special card uh, of George Lucas? this i haven't seen a postcard of george lucas it's funny you know it's funny you should mention that it was one of the things that i was i was looking for um but no i've i i don't think i've ever seen a postcard of george lucas himself uh he's not particularly big on on uh on publicity he's quite he's he's quite a shy person so i'm not too surprised i mean he does do promotion stuff he did promotion stuff with disney and bits and pieces but uh no i've not seen a postcard I know, I know, there's a, an opening there for a publisher in the, in the uk with the, the copyright uh, I, uh, to be fair just do what all the others do and uh and, and knock one out without actually putting your name on the back <laughs> that seems to be the best way of avoiding the copyright thing not that i would in any way condone anyone 
producing a card without having the official license. Okay. Uh, Katie Clark, I think, wraps up the whole feeling that we all have when she says, what a cool collection of cards. <laughs> thank you, Katie. Over and out, Hal. Oh, thank you, Bill. Are there any other comments or questions anyone has or want to thank uh, Mark? I, I'm just blown away. Uh, but, you know, this is a facet of collecting that uh, 20 or 30 years ago, we were interested all of a sudden in modern postcards. And in England, there were several catalogs on modern postcards and several dealers. And I don't mean a lot, but two or three dealers that would show up at fairs. And we had a four more. We had a four more. We had three. No, we had four all modern postcard fairs. So, you know, there was quite a few modern dealers. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was neat. And uh, I'm proud to say that the Wichita Postcard Club used modern postcards one year as a show theme. And you'll find cards all over the world done by other uh, artists from like France and from England and uh, that, that they were willing to participate and to make a Wichita Postcard Club card with their name on it. They were available at our show and talk about a, all of this was before the internet. So it was snail mail going back and forth and trying to get them paid afterwards. We sold them at what they wanted to have for them and then getting them paid and then getting all of these cards returned to them that did not sell. So I can't say it was a smashing success monetarily, but it was something that we did and no one else has done since. So that should tell you something right there. But thank you, Mark. I just I cannot believe all of this. It's just fabulous. Really great. Thank you. It was my pleasure.